About a year ago, I did a video trying to find out exactly what a face hugger deposits into its unlucky hosts. There I offered up two main explanations. The original thought was that the face hugger was implanting its host with a xenomorph embryo. This makes sense when you look at the chestburster that developed shortly after implantation. However, other sources such as the Aliens magazine noted that the corporation, LaSalle Bionational, surmised through their own studies on the xenomorph that the facehugger would deposit a knot of specifically tailored cancers that would bring about chemogenetic restructuring of the host cells, essentially building the chestburster from the host's own biological material on the cellular level. Both ideas can work within the cinematic universe, but now we have another more complete theory as to just what the facehuggers are forcing into their hosts. Alien, The Cold Forge, a novel by Alex White from Titan Books. Here we are introduced to Plagaris Prepotens, a new substance thought to be the origin of life of the chestburster. I don't know if I'm saying that right, so for the rest of the video I'm just going to refer to it as Double P. The book states that on space station RB232, better known as the Cold Forge, Dr. Blue Marsalis was doing work on the xenomorphs that led to the discovery of just what exactly is forced into the host from the facehuggers. And it's not an embryo, although it's going to grow into one. And it's not a tumor either. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. It's said to be a modified version of the black goo created by David sometime between the events of Alien Covenant and Alien. Now the book itself does not go as far as to link the double P to the mysterious black catalyst substance of the engineers, but Reddit user Megajake95 contacted Alex White to see if the double P was the same as the black goo from Prometheus and Alien Covenant. And Alex replied, yep, it was the same stuff and it was resequenced by David Linnaeus style. Possibly referring to Carl Linnaeus who worked in taxonomy, the science of naming and classifying organisms, similar to what David did in his own lab on LV-223. Now many fans of the Alien universe consider the Titan books to be canon in the Alien film universe. They are approved by Fox, yet many of the items that are approved by Fox contradict each other, so I think there is a distinction to be noted between what is approved and what is canon, and Fox themselves have never made any canon statements on the Alien franchise beyond the films. To be honest, I think this idea works quite well, in fact partially because it envelops all the other past ideas into one cohesive explanation. The facehugger doesn't implant an embryo, yet one is going to grow soon after. In my opinion, this idea would make the xenomorph alien species a formidable one. They are not only mimicking their hosts, but they are actually grown from them, and may even likely share the same DNA just like the engineers and humans do. As I mentioned in my past video, this would also make the species very resistant to sickness and disease by making different variants that would be immune to different diseases and infections. This would also mean that the facehugger isn't simply a baby alien carrier. It's a delivery source for perhaps the most deadly toxin in the universe. Alien Covenant would have us believe that David was the creator of the facehugger. Even the Redditor who was asking Alex White the question came to the conclusion that because David resequenced the black goo into the facehuggers, that this means that David created the xenomorph by genetically resequencing the black goo into the double P. Unfortunately, the novel for Alien Covenant offers a different version of who created the facehugger by saying that the engineers left the ovomorph behind and that David merely found it. The movie itself never states if David created the ovomorph himself or not. Even if he was the inventor of the alien egg, then what was deposited from the trilobite into the engineer in Prometheus? David wouldn't have had the chance to resequence the goo into the double P yet. Perhaps it was simply the goo itself transported via trilobite into the engineer. Or maybe in this proto form of alien, it was an embryo that was delivered. I'd say that the Deacon's birth is just a further example that David didn't create anything so far as he simply modified what others above him had already stumbled on before. And I'm not belittling his contribution either. David was designed to be both infinitely intelligent and curious, so he took the knowledge he gained from the engineers during his trip to Planet 4 and added his own twists in order to create the perfect organism. A xenomorph built from its host will be ready for whatever planet or environment it's dropped into. It would be able to infiltrate almost any living creature's defenses. Its adaptability taken to the extremes, the unstoppable plague unleashed on the stars. And that's all I have on this one guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. 
Again, in my opinion, official movie canon is still wide open on what really happens here, but I love how the extended universe offers up other explanations to the questions that all Alien fans love to ponder. Thanks again for watching, and I'd love to hear your comments down below.